Welcome back to Code 3 and the Case of Desiree Sunford. In Part 1 of this series, we covered the bizarre interview with Desiree's husband, Scott. And in Part 2, we cover the interview of Paige Blades, who states she knows the identity of the killer, her longtime friend, Marty Grismer. Police convince Paige to wear a wire and try to get Marty to admit to the crime. But Marty is suspicious and avoids the topic while speaking with her. Luckily for police, more evidence surfaces that connects Marty to the crime, and they are confident they now have the killer. Code 3 presents Part 3 of the case of Desiree Sunford, the interrogation of Marty Grismer. So, so let you know, we're being audio and video recorded in here. Okay. And Give me a second here to get myself organized a little bit. I'm going to tell you exactly why we're here and why we wanted to speak to you. Okay. As I told you out in the field, my name is Sam Pearl. This is Dave Johnson. We're detectives with the Yakima County Sheriff's Office. Okay. And we're investigating the shooting of Desiree Sunford that happened on or about April 7, 2013 in Yakima County. Um, our case number is 13C04701. Uh, today's date is November 13th, 2014. We're at the Moses Lake Police Department, and uh, you are Marty Grisman? Yes, that's my name. Okay, what's your full name? Uh, Marty Dean Grisman. Uh, okay, and what's your date of birth? Uh, 42587. Okay, and what's your address? Okay. And like I told you, we're investigating this shooting, this homicide that happened last year. And to be honest with you, your name was never on our radar. Um, you know, we didn't have any reason to come and talk to you, but then we got this uh, Crime Stoppers tip, just an anonymous Crime Stoppers tip saying that uh, Marty Grismer shot that lady, basically, you know? And so... I met her once. <laughs> okay. Um, because of that, yeah. then we did start, we said, well, we need to talk to this Marty Grismer. Yeah. Whether or not it, you know, just an anonymous tip doesn't mean much, but we have, have to do to our jobs up. and uh, follow up on it, okay? I understand that. Okay. And so, because we're here, at the police department, and this is a criminal investigation, I'm going to read you your Miranda warnings. And I looked at your criminal history, you've never been in any trouble before. No, I've never but, been in the police department before. Yeah, you've probably seen it on TV. Maybe you've seen a cop yeah. show or something. Okay. He hasn't. Okay, so you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right at this time to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before questioning. If you wish, you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Okay. Do you understand each of these rights as I have explained them to you? Yes. Okay. Having these rights in mind, are you willing to keep talking to us right now? I have nothing to hide, so I have no reason not to keep talking to you. Okay. So is that a yes? Yes, that's a yes. Okay. I, know, I know you need a yes for the record and everything, so. Okay. And you understand that we're being recorded right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm on audio recording there, video there, and whoever's watching or whatever, so. Okay. And I don't know if anyone's watching or not. I don't, this isn't our facility, so. Um, so we got this tip, and so I, I didn't even know who you were, like I said, so I just started doing some research. Who is Marty Grismer? Found out, you know, okay, there's a Marty Grismer that lives on North Grape Drive and 
no criminal history, no contacts with the police, and I could see maybe a I traffic two traffic, traffic yeah. tickets for speeding. Yeah. 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 So pretty mild stuff. Uh, nothing that suggests murder or anything. Um, I hope not. <laughs> and then I I ran a report that shows me all the guns that are registered to you, and it says that you own a Glock 9mm? Yes, I do. You do? Okay. Uh, you still own that? Uh, it's at my apartment in the back of my wife's van with a, a supply of ammunition. I got it from my dad's place to, um, about a month or two ago, one of my friends, Debbie Childress, she had a dog that she wanted to put down, but ended up, her husband ended up putting it down, so. Okay, so that, that um, Glock 9mm is in your wife's car? It's in the back of the, of the van. And that van is where? It's back at the apartment. At the apartment? Yeah. You're more than welcome to see it, take a look at it. Not any tests or anything you need to do on it. What kind of van is it? Uh, it's 2004 Chevy Venture, okay. I think. So. I'll be more than happy to turn the weapon over to you to okay. do any tests or anything Appreciate you need to do. I know that would speed the process I mean, with anything. What color is the van? Uh, kind of a dark green. It was the one at the end of the road there. So. You don't happen to know the license plate number off the top of your head? Off the top of my head, no. Okay. It's parked near your car? Uh, it's parked at the end of the road, at the end of the thing, though. Okay. And is that the only um, Glock 9 millimeter that you own? Yes, it the, is. The one? Mm -hmm. Okay. It got, you got it from your dad's house? Uh, a while you ago, yeah. You retrieved it from your dad's house? Well, I didn't, um, with us moving and different things like that, I didn't want to have any firearms around Corbin. Okay. Well, so you keep it out of the house. That's why it's in the car. Yes. Is he it, climbs and gets into everything. I don't want to have any safety risk of anything with him. Is it in a locked box no. in the van? Or? No, I don't have any locked boxes for anything on it. It's just, it's in a backpack. I in, got the ammunition. In a backpack? Yeah. Sure. I got the supply of ammunition I had in that, so. And how long have you had that gun? Hmm. It's been a while now. Um, I know it's a Gen 3 Glock. I think I've had that four, five years now. Sure. So I remember I bought, I bought a 1911 45 and my AO around my birthday, I think, and then I bought that one later because I wanted to get one. So. Okay. And is that gun usually in your control? It's usually in the back of the, my wife's van. So. Okay. In my control, yeah, I mean, I would say that. Okay. It's, so do you ever loan it out to people? I have before on that, but not recently. Okay. When's the last time that you loaned it out? Uh, middle of last year. There was a um, friend wanted to go shooting on it. I don't know if they ever used it or not. But they ended up stealing one of my other guns. It just it was a complicated scenario, so. Okay. So, um, about what month was it? Um, I think that was June and July was the last time last year that I lent it out. Okay. And who was the friend that you lent it to? Uh, Robert Funk. He's not really a friend anymore on there. He was my friend Stella's ex-boyfriend on the um, complicated scenario there. Okay. He ended up running off on her. And how long did he have the gun? Uh, he had it for like a week or so, I think. And that was June or July. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, do you, do you recall loaning it out to anyone? I had a couple of times, but I don't have specific times. I just remember the last time on it, because that's when him and her broke up. And okay. Do you remember who you loaned it to in the past? Uh, mostly have been just him on there. I haven't really loaned out to anyone else. So Robert Funk is the only person that you've loaned it to? Yeah, besides my dad. I think he used it once or twice, but that was, you know, years ago. So. Okay. You mentioned that you have met uh, Desiree Sunford once. Mm -hmm. uh, when was that? Um, 
I had a friend, Lorene Zagalini, over in Yakima. Mm -hmm. um, she was a low-income senior. I met her through another friend of mine on the page, Ackland. And um, I, she was not doing too well on there. So I went over to Scott and Des's house on there and talked with them. They were going out of town one time on there. It was the only time I've ever been to the place on there. Mm -hmm. And um, I met her in passing. I met Scott many times before that, but I never ran into his wife because we never had any functions or anything together. Okay. And when, were, when was that that you went to the house and saw her? Um, I think March of last year. March of 13, okay. Were they living in their house or their apartment? Oh, uh, they lived in the house. Okay, what kind of house was it? Uh, I think it was just, I'm not sure if it was a double wide, I think it was a manufactured home. Okay. I know it was out in the country, though, it just took me a while to find the place, but. Okay, and so you met Scott, you knew Scott because you had seen him oh, several yeah. times? I have met him before on there. He's been an acquaintance on there, a friend of mine off and on, so. Okay, and how did you meet Scott? Uh, through Paige. Okay. How long have you known Scott? Uh, I would say probably at this point now about a year and a half off and on there. It's just kind of an acquaintance, not really anything more than that. Okay. Just known so of him more than anything. Not real close? Do no. you socialize? A few times, not very often. Okay. Um, we have mutual friends and all that, so you know, I've gone out to dinners with him and Stella and Paige and you know, my wife and him and us and Paige and Stella have gone out and just a group of friends going out usually. Okay. So Paige is kind of the mutual link between you and Scott? I would say yes. Okay. She introduced us, so Okay. What she introduced you about a year and a half ago, you say? And shortly after I met her, so yeah, I say around Christmas of the year the year before. Okay. Christmas of 2012, November, somewhere in that time frame. Okay. Have you ever um, let uh, Scott or Paige borrow your 9mm, your Glock? Not mine, no. Not, not I, mine? Have they borrowed, ever borrowed a 9mm from you? No, they haven't. I've known that I think she has one right now from Dylan. That's about it. She has a Glock 9mm from I think Dylan? she has a... Yeah, Dylan Williams, mm -hmm. uh, the son, oh. the son's father. Okay. Okay. How do you know that she has a Glock? My knowledge. She bought. Uh, she wanted ammunition from me a while ago too. After Debbie's dog thing, I had the ammunition with me, so she got. Um, I think I had bit of Valley ammunition that I bought in a while ago. She wanted ammunition to go target shooting with Jim Keelan. So she'd gotten the gun from Dylan only because Dylan was concerned about his security. So what kind of firearm does Dylan have? Um, he to my understanding he let her borrow a Gen 2 Glock 9 mm I believe it was a Glock 17 for well, yes. Glock. I believe so. That's the indication that I got from her because she I mean, asked him. One of her own. I believe she has his in her possession because I believe he wanted okay. her to have it for protection for the baby in the home. Okay. Did, did she show it to you or did she just tell you about it? Um, she's never shown it to me on this. She just asked for ammunition from me because she knew that I had a large stockpile because I've previously, before I got married, I collected gun parts, ammunition, just traded back and forth and things. So. How long ago did she borrow the ammunition? Uh, probably about two months ago. I was in the ball. She was asked, hey, can I have, you know, 50, 100 rounds of ammunition on there if she wanted to go shooting? Because she hadn't been shooting in a while. So. Did you go shooting with her, or did she go shooting by herself? Again, she went shooting with Jim Keeling. J Jim Keeling? No, uh, Jim Keeling. Keeling. He works out there basically when he can lose. Operate to help around with uh, the friends. Was there anything specific that she that she was concerned about? Why would Dylan think she needed a gun? I don't know. Probably crime in the area. They live in Warden, so I, mean, I don't know if it's good or bad or anything. Although he just had wanted her to have a working firearm for quite some time. Okay. Do you know how long she's had that gun, that particular gun? I don't know. She used to live with Dylan. I don't know if she's had it before or if she currently. Has. I don't know if she even still has it. I just know that she asked for ammunition that time for him to go shoot him. Okay.
Did, did you hear um, Paige and Scott talk about Scott's relationship with Desiree and Paige's relationship with Desiree? Were you aware of that whole love triangle that was going on? Yes, Paige told me about that. Okay. What, what kind of things did she tell you? Just past sexual activity on the, you know, that they'd lived together, that they had had a polymorphous relationship or whatever on there where they were all, you know, together at different times, so. So she, Paige said that Scott, Desiree, and Paige were all involved in sexual? That, that was the indication I got either right or wrong on there. Okay. So. And did Paige, it's my understanding that Paige yeah. and Desiree had a falling out. I guess, I mean, to an extent, yeah. I don't know over what. I don't know if they, she didn't want to continue on with that or not. I don't know. That was before I knew them, so. Because I think it was before I knew them. The falling out was before? I believe so, but I don't know. Again, it was, I never met Desiree before that one time, mm -hmm. so. But I'm, but I'm just curious what uh, Paige had to say about it. What, how, did, how did Paige feel about Desiree? after the falling out. I think she was hurt by it. I mean, I, I, mean, I know that Paige has an unusual relationship with Scott on there. When I was, I was kind of codependent. But I always thought that she kind of invested a lot of her emotional security in Scott. And that, you know, because she, you know, talked about things on there. It's like she was obsessed with him being the anchor for her emotional happiness and things. But then again, I think that kind of faded over time. She kind of finally woke up. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they're still together or not, because Paige and I have had kind of a falling out over things. I mean, she's caused some problems between me and my wife, and then me at work, so. Okay. Did you ever hear Paige or Scott talk about wanting to hurt Desiree, or wanting Desiree gone, or wanting her out of the picture? Nothing specifically, no. I can't and think of non specifically did they make general comments about uh, about eventually divorcing her, things like that, a couple times on there, but nothing that was, you know, just specific. It was just, you know, conversation about So Scott mm -hmm. Scott said that he wanted to I think Paige had said on there, you know, that she'd wanted him to divorce his wife or you know, figure out some way to get away from her and things like that, but I don't know. It wasn't again anything specific and this was a long time ago. I mean, I don't call every conversation from a year, year and a half ago. So I know you only met everybody, or at least not necessarily Paige, but Scott and Desiree in December, around Christmas of 2012. Yeah. And then she passed away in April of 2013. So those conversations before she passed away? Those conversations were before About the divorce. divorce? Well, it was just them having problems and different things on there. So, mm -hmm. in the past, so. I mean, I didn't know what had been either rectified or I don't know if that was talked from, you know, far before that because, you know, we would go out, have coffee after work or things like that and talk, so. And you said that Paige was pretty emotionally attached to Scott. Was that more of a <clears throat> one-sided relationship, her more into Scott than Scott into Paige? I think it was kind of equal, maybe, because I know he came to spend time with her frequently. Okay. So I don't know how much Des knew about that or anyone knew about that because we've got the feeling that they were kind of hiding being okay. together for a long time because I don't think that he was, you know, in a position to end anything on there. I didn't want her to find out. I don't. That was just the feeling I got. Okay. So. You got the impression that there was a time when Paige felt like her happiness depended on being with Scott. Like, so if she couldn't be with Scott, she couldn't be happy? Is that well, I, would th I think more that it was that she has a lot of, I know that she has a lot of, you know, issues on those things, mental problems that she doesn't have treated on, at least that's what she told me before, that she doesn't take medication for anything on there, but that she had always kind of viewed her conversations with Scott and the relationship as that as being therapeutic for her on there to help give her a sense of normalcy on there, not to go to be depressed or anything like that, especially with the children and the children she's not had taken that. away from them. So. What kind of mental problems did she talk about? Um, just mostly depression on there. I think bipolar she had indicated on there, but that was about it. Okay. 
and she indicated that she wasn't taking any medication for it on them, trauma from her past and things. Pretty much kind of described it by them because they're like PTSD type issues. And just so I'm clear, she, her, it, Scott talked about getting the divorce from Desiree, but did you ever hear him talking about wanting to hurt Desiree or wanting her gone or out of the picture? No, I never did. Okay. And he just talked about wanting to leave her and things like that just because he was kind of unhappy with things, but just never really could and never got to that point. Okay. And did you ever hear Paige say anything about wanting Desiree out of the picture? Or well, just to the extent that it would make relationships, it make the relationship easier on there, but she was going on with multiple different people on this, I don't know. Did, did she talk about how she would get her out of the picture? No, I never had any indication of violence from her though for it. So. Okay. so what was your, was she talking strictly divorce? Or? Well, I, I don't know if it was that or if it was just, you know, trying to expose things just to get Desiree to pick fights and get her to leave him, I don't know. Expose what kind of things? Well, either Scott's infidelity or Scott lying to her, different things like that. Trying to, you know, try to engineer some sort of an argument or scenario where Des would leave him. That was always kind of the impression I got that she would try to manipulate the scenario to control it so that okay. Des would initiate things on it so that Scott would have safe face. So she was trying to drive a wedge in between them, kind of? Well, I think, yeah, he was doing a pretty good job of it himself by, you know, lying to his wife and cheating on her and everything else on her because I got that impression that he was doing that. Okay. He was kind of a dick, so. Yeah. I don't um, know if you've met him or not, but. Yeah, I talked to him. He's kind of emotionally just aloof, distant. Just <coughs> she was kind of described him as stoic, but it's never kind of the impression I got, just dick. Yeah. So. What's your relationship with Paige? Uh, it's been complicated over the years. I mean, she was the best man at my wedding. So, I mean, she was my best friend for a while there. And then recently, you know, kind of, we've had a falling out over different things on there. She was hurt that I got married to my wife and um, we were a babysitter for a while and my wife didn't want to be a babysitter anymore. Then she stopped talking to me for a month and a half and just kind of started cutting off contact and ties and all that, so. You said she was the best man at your wedding? Yes. Oh, okay. She was my best friend, so I had her be my best man. Okay, all right. That's the first. Well, she was pregnant with Philip at the time, too, yeah. so she was a pregnant okay. best man. All right. So. Were you two involved in a sexual relationship at one time? Not exactly, no. We just fooled around a bit on the early on, but I think she was kind of just using me as cover for hiding relationships with Scott and other things, so that ended very quickly. So, not exactly, does that... You guys didn't have the intercourse, but yes. you other things? Yes, that, okay. that's exactly right. Okay. Um, and when was that going on? That was going on until about December of 2012. Okay. That was shortly after we met, from November through December, and we had a couple of encounters on there. And then after that, it would be, you know, giving a massage here and there, things like that, when she was stressed. That was pretty much it. Okay. And uh, when did you marry your wife? Uh, September of 2013. Okay. So this all ended that aspect before that. Okay. And then, so were you dating your wife uh, during that same period? Like, just, just oh, no. Um, my wife and I only met uh, in the middle of June of 2013. Okay. Oh, so quick love at first sight? Absolutely. We met June and then married? It was around June. So we, met on a, we met on a dating site and then we met. Oh, uh, okay. So we dated and fell in love and just got married. Okay. I love her and Corbin to death on there. Corbin, it, it's, it's, he was a little bored. It's, it's Corbin's he's stepson. Your, oh, stepson. So it's her. she brought him to the marriage. Yeah, he's a cute kid. He looks <laughs> enough like you that I believe he was your son. He's an amazing kid. I love him to death. Yeah. Trying, I live for him and Beth on the trying to you know, divide for them. It's been stressful here because what, <coughs> what happened at work on there, you know, I've had two suspensions here and layoffs on there, and it's been hard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the suspensions. You work at Basic American Foods, and so does Paige. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was doing my research, trying to figure out who you are, or where you'd be, where I could contact you, I called down there and talked to Basic American Foods, and they said that you were suspended from work. Mm -hmm. 
for having gun parts yeah. that work. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me about that. What kind of gun parts are we talking about? I have a gun barrel that I left there. A gun barrel? Yeah. Okay. Um, any other parts? Uh, that was it that I believe. Okay, just the barrel? Mm -hmm. What kind of barrel is it? Um, I don't recall what kind it was offhand. You don't remember the brand? No, I don't. Okay. And where is that barrel from? Uh, it was just a spare part I had that I was selling. Okay. And so how did it end up at work? I had a seller fault um, that I had contacted, and they backed out, a, a buyer backed out on it. This was after my last, after my first suspension on there, because I was trying to liquidate some assets, mm -hmm. and I was having a really bad day that day, and I was going to sell off some of my parts, and that was a day that my dad helped me out on there, because he was, I was going to sell off all my guns and try to make rent, try to make pay off my bills. And so you weren't getting paid while you were on suspension? No. Okay. I was going to sell off pretty much all my guns and try to, just try to make it. I mean, I mean, before I met my wife and before everything on there, and I bought my car outright, I was you know, going to school, and then I paid off a lot of debts, I suppose, and a lot of different things on there, just trying to get her head above water and then try to get things taken care of on there. And my job, when I was I had the team lead job, I was just surviving month to month on there with things. And I got a pay cut here, you know, $300 a paycheck every two weeks. I've lost you know, $600 a month there. And that hurts. It does a lot, and I'm, I'm going from you know, looking, at, looking at the place where I'm at right now to I'm going to have to try to get low-income apartments, or I'm going to have to move over to the Yakima area up Seal and live with my in-laws over there to try to find a different job. I, so when did you first take the gun barrel to work then? Uh, I took it to work after my last suspension because I had it with me. It was a part I picked up. I was going to sell. Okay. And who did you get it from? I don't recall. I've had it for quite, I've had it for like a year or so. I got it from a person in trade. How long have you had it? I'm sorry. It was around a year, a little bit less, I think. Less than a year? Yeah. <coughs> Again, I, you know, bought and sold and traded gun parts from people. So you didn't buy it new? Not that I recall now. Do you recall who you traded it for or who you bought it from? Um, I know I bought it from someone locally here. I just don't recall because it was just we were horse swapping a whole bunch of parts on there between different things. So. And you have no idea. So about about when did you take possession of it? Uh, I think it was August or September of last year. It was around the time I got married. Is there any chance that you got that barrel from Paige or Scott? It's possible, but I, again, I don't recall. I don't, I've bought in some things, gotten some things from Scott offhand, but I don't recall they got. You've gotten gun parts from Scott? Um, I asked him for ammunition, different things on because he showed me guns that he had ammunition on there. But again, I don't recall specifically on there. I don't recall if I got it from him or an acquaintance of his. So. Could you have gotten it from Paige? It's possible, but I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. No. I don't think I've ever gotten anything from Paige. Or Scott? Well, Scott, I believe I have, but again, it's been so long I don't call specifically. You've gotten gun parts from Scott? Uh, I believe I've investigated ammunition from him. I don't recall if I ever got any from him or not. I think I got some once or twice on that. I don't recall if I got a, this from him or not. You got ammunition from Scott? Well, I wanted ammunition, different things on there, because he was in the military. I just kind of picked his brain about that, because that was his kind of specialty on there. So. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get a gun down from Scott? I don't recall if I did or didn't. Okay. If I said that this was a lone wolf barrel, would mm -hmm. that ring a bell? It might, I know. It could be. I don't recall if it is or isn't though. I saw a picture of it. It's got a wolf edged on the, on the top of it. Okay. And I had a lone wolf barrel in my gun. Huh. That's how I know. I recognize the logo. It could be. I don't recall. I mean, I've had, I've bought a lot of gun parts over the years. I've had a lot, so. Have, did you ever buy new gun barrels from Lone Wolf? I think I have before. I don't know if I have if had one like this before or not. So if I did a search warrant with Lone Wolf mm -hmm. and asked them for all your purchases, 
is there a chance that this gun barrel is going to show up as being bought new by you? It's possible on me. I don't recall if this is one I've had before or not. Again, I've bought, I've bought before on there. I've traded parts and gotten the same ones back before. I don't know if this is or isn't. And you're not sure this could have come from Scott, but you don't know? I don't know. I, again, with all the parts I've had, I don't know where all of them have come from exactly on this best recollection on there. And this is, you know, I've had other ones that I've gotten before, traded in, traded out. So I don't know where this one or any of them have come from specifically. But you do recall that you've had this one for a year? About a year. Because I had, didn't have any before that, and I got this one back. This was around the time I got married, so it was kind of stuck in my mind a little bit. You got it back? No, I got a barrel back. I didn't have any spares. You got a barrel back? No, I got a, I got a barrel back into my possession on there for a pistol. I've had other spare parts for other spare barrels for different guns on there before. So. Did you have this barrel last May during the period when Desiree was shot? Last May. April? I don't believe so. A April 2013, just to be clear. I don't believe I had any pistol barrels in my possession at that time, no, besides what was in my gun. Was this barrel ever in your gun? No. It's never been in there? No, I've never put that barrel in my gun. So if I we... Was, if we get your Glock and out of your wife's car and, and put this barrel in it, ballistically, they should be able to tell from the wear marks on the barrel mm -hmm. uh, whether or not it was in that gun, whether it's fired rounds. Do you think it's going to show that that barrel has been in your gun? I don't believe so, no. Have you ever swapped out the ejector on your gun? The ejector? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't. So the ejector is the same as when you bought it? Mm -hmm. Did you ever offer to kill Desiree Sunford for Paige? No, I haven't. I've never offered to kill anyone for anything. It's not in my nature. Have you ever discussed killing her with Paige? No. Did she ever ask you to kill Desiree Sunford? No. Did Scott ever ask you to kill Desiree Sunford? No one's ever asked me to kill anyone. I wouldn't. I've never thrown a punch in anger in my life. I wouldn't kill anyone. It's not who I am. I mean, you can ask my wife or anything on them. I avoid confrontation and nonviolent when it comes to things. I've never I'm a pacifist when it comes to a lot of things. I like guns because I like the mechanics of them. Have you ever told Paige that you would take care of anyone for her or anyone that makes her mad you'd take them out for her? No. I've never said that to her and I never would. Where the, where the problem comes in, the difficulty for you is that Paige is saying that you are the one who shot and killed Desiree Sanford. She said that you confessed that to her. And she came in and gave a tape statement to that effect. I can't believe that bitch is yelling that. I mean, she accused me of sexual harassment at work on the after propositioning me, you know, a month before that. And trying to ruin my fucking life here, what? So this is the this is the situation yeah. that we're in, and this is why you seem to have a a decent understanding of when you got that barrel, but you don't recall where. So you need to rack your brain and figure out, help us figure out where you got that barrel, okay? Because Paige has put you smack in the middle of a murder investigation. Just trying to ruin my life here. I mean. This would be a good way to go about it. Your life is about ready to change, depending on the answers you're giving us. I know that. That's how serious this is. I understand that, because I, mean, I haven't done anything wrong on the other night, but... 
she's trying to engineer, set me up here, do something. I was saying to you that um, that killed someone. How did that? It makes me sick. Let me ask you this. Do you have a jewelry box that may have come from the Sunford house? No, I don't have any jewelry boxes. Just my wife has one little hut, hut shaped one. She has a heart shaped jewelry box? Yeah, it's like a little pewter thing she's got on a nightstand at the house. Could that have come from the Sunford house? My wife had it. I don't know. She She's had it before I met her. She had it before? You didn't give it to her? I've never given my wife a jewelry box. Has Paige ever talked about her jewelry box with you? She talked about wanting a cherry wood one we made once. So that was about it. Did, have she, has she ever asked you about a, a jewelry box? Just out of the blue, did she start asking you about a jewelry box? Well, I told her my dad bought $30,000 in cherry wood. She asked if, you know, because he bought cherry and walnut wood on there. She asked if, you know, hey, she can make me one a jewelry box, you know, Gave big by David one time. That was about it. Never did though. My dad didn't have the shop finished. Did she, did she ever talk, ask you about whether or not you had a jewelry box? Or I think she did once on it, but it was just I, she was asking before about the construction of one. I told her just had a licensing box. And that was it. She was asking about construction on there because I told her my dad, you know, made hope chests and cherry chests and all that before, and she was wanting some work done on there because I'd helped her out uh, fixing up stuff at her house for her. Is it possible that Paige recruited you into a scheme and then just threw you under the bus? I definitely feel thrown under the bus, but I don't know. This. Where it gets even worse for you is this gun barrel that we've been talking about. That's the gun barrel that was in the gun that killed Desiree Sunford. I've already retrieved that gun barrel from Basic American Foods, and I've already had the ballistic analysis done on it. And the slugs that were pulled from Desiree's body came from that gun. How? Well, that's the big question. You have the barrel that the bullets came out of that killed her. There's no question. So we need the truth. And we need it now. I've had, I've had uh, that bill for a while on there. I did get it back after on there. I did let Paige borrow the gun earlier last year. She had the gun. She had that bill on there. She asked me if I had a different one before on there. I didn't know what she wanted it for. So you loaned the gun to Paige? I loaned the gun to her early last year. This was around February, on that she had it for a while. And that's I got the, the barrel gun. that was in the gun when you loaned it to her? That was the barrel she asked for, because she asked if I had one that was threaded on there. That was one I had, because I originally wanted to buy a silencer a few years ago, but I never did after the law changed. When did you get it back from her? I got it back about the end of March. Didn't know if anything had happened to all that. She asked me to try to get rid of stuff on. End of March? Yeah. Oh, 23rd. Or this year? 2013. That was not March, sorry. May. I'm sorry? May, I'm sorry. May of 2013? 
No, March? Yeah. Okay. I assume she just wanted it for home defense or something. I there. I thought the threading was hard that she wanted one that was threaded. I always kind of thought maybe something had happened, but I didn't ever think she, anything was capable of it. Did she tell you what she wanted to borrow the gun for? She just said she wanted a gun. She just said she wanted a gun on the... God. I guess I should not have held one. So you're saying she got the gun in February of 13, gave it back to you in May of 13? Did you ever go shooting that gun with her? I've never gone shooting with Paige. She asked multiple times on there for me to take her shooting or to go shooting on there, and I never did. When April of 2013, were you driving a rental car for a while? Yeah, my car was in the shop. What kind of rental car were you driving? I think it was a Chevy, but I don't. What color was it? I think it was black or blue. Did, uh, where did you rent it from? I didn't rent it. The insurance company did. But was it your mother's wife or somewhere else? They dropped it off. Um, I think they rented it here. I remember I dropped it back off at the airport. What's your insurance company? Uh, currently it's nationwide, but I think I had, had a Geico progressive at the time. Why does that... Yeah, I go over progressive, you thought? I think it's, I don't recall. I've changed it to insurance. Which rental outfit? Did, um, did you drop it off with at the airport? It's the one by the fuel tanks. I think it's Hertz, but I don't know. Why? Did that car drive to Yakima on the night of? April 6th, morning of April 7th, 2013? I don't, I don't know. I didn't have the car that night. Who had it? I was asleep at my house. Paige asked to borrow the car. Tell us about that. I was a night I didn't sleep well, so she asked to borrow the car. She said she wanted to make a trip on it. She something was wrong with her car, she said. So she asked she could borrow the car. I didn't feel good about it, but she borrowed the car. She said she would drop it back off at the house and she said she had to ride back to her place. How'd she get to your place? She, she dropped me back off. It was like 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock or so. She asked me to come in, come see her. She wanted to talk. So how did you, did you take it to Warden or did she come up? I lived in Warden at the time. Oh, you lived in Warden at the time? Yeah, I, was, I lived outside of Warden. So I just five minutes from her, so we would spend time together quite often. So you were living at your dad's house at that time? Yes. Okay. And she contacted you and asked you to come over? Mm -hmm. So she wanted to talk, so she, and then we got there, she asked if she could borrow the car. She talked about borrowing the car before, and I always kind of said no, but I'd let Stella and other people borrow my car, so. What, uh, what other kind of stuff did she want to talk to, about, talk to you about? Why did she call you over there? Was it just to borrow the car? It was just to borrow the car, and she wanted a bit of money. Okay, how much money? I think it was like 40 or 60 bucks. 
she's gotten a lot of money out of me over the years. But what time of night is this? Or during the day, night? It was. I was just getting ready to go to bed. I think I worked day shift the next day. I was getting was really late, so probably around nine, ten o'clock. Where did she say she wanted to take it? She didn't. She said she wanted to go out of town with it. She didn't say where? No. Did she say anything about Scott? Or Scott coming over to her house? No, she said something about the Tri-Cities with Scott. But... And something about Dylan too, but I don't recall. So what time did she actually drop you back off at your dad's house? It was about 10 o'clock. I was only about 45 minutes. She dropped me back off. She got the car and it was back the next morning, like she said. She left the keys inside the door on the screen door. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary in the car? Was there anything that seemed out of place? Or? It was a rental car. It was empty. I didn't have anything in it, so... It wasn't dirty or no, no like blood on the steering wheel or anything like that? No, the car was clean, as far as I could tell. It had been raining, so... Gas? Gas tank at people? Fire people? I assume that's what she'd wanted to use the money for was gas money. I think it was like half full, so when I gave it to her, it was about the same <coughs> I got it back. It was a little full, actually. So I assume she'd put gas into it. You know, I bought her that color she has right now. I've given her she owes me ten thousand dollars on there for everything on there. It's just Is there anything any chance that you took a drive with Paige that night? No. I was in my bed on there. I didn't sleep all that night, I was tossing into any lot. Why? I had a lot of insomnia, a lot of different things. I just, I often don't sleep well. I haven't slept well since I was a little kid. Did she, the following day, did she ask you to dispose of anything, like clothing or anything? Did she ask you to get rid of anything? No. Positive? I'm positive. You might even from the beginning of this conversation, as soon as you sat down, your heart's been about ready to jump out of your throat. Okay? We can see that from here. I can see it from here. Okay? If I were to take your pulse right now, I'd be off the record probably. Okay? You knew exactly what we wanted to talk to you about when you sat down. Okay? You've been trying to think what's going on over the next hour. That's almost as long as we've been here. Okay? You denied a lot of things, all of a sudden things got real clear when we brought things to your attention. This is our not, not our first rodeo. No, you done this a lot of okay. We've been doing this a very long time. And you want to come out with the truth, I can tell that. Okay? You're not a good liar. Okay? You're starting to tell the truth, and we appreciate that. But then you're starting to drift off trying to think, okay? That's what gets you in trouble. You need to stay on track and tell the truth. Lying is not going to help you at all. It's not like when we ask these questions, we don't know about things, because we already do. I mean, we blew, you out water about, we blew you out of the water about the rental car. How do you know about that? Usually our job is, we're asking questions. You already know the answers. We already know the answers. So. You shouldn't deviate from that. I know. Okay? Because it could be my life if I do. Your life is on the line right now. It's 
So, Paige borrowed the car. Yes. And you never left with her? No, I was in the war in the entire time. But was your dad home at the time? Can we confirm that you were by your, at your dad's that night? I don't know if he was home or not. You could probably check with his trucking okay. company to see where he was at. They all have Qualcomm's. He's getting the Swift. And we know that that barrel was used in the murder. Okay. And we both strongly believe that you were involved in that murder. Very strongly, we believe that. I've never killed anyone. But you know who killed her. Were you present? No. I was not there. I was at home. I thought, honestly, I thought that maybe something had happened. Maybe she arranged something on there. But I never wanted to believe it because, honestly, I've loved her. I loved Paige for a long time. I never wanted to think that anything bad had happened or that she'd done something. Did she talk to you, maybe even what you thought was jokingly, about a plan on how she would go and kill Desiree? She's talked idly about, you know, other people and things like that before, but nothing ever came of it. I thought it was just joking other things. Well, what about Desiree? Did she talk about killing Desiree? She talked about wanting her gone. She mm -hmm. talked about, you know, thinking about it or dreaming about it or, you know, different things on there, but she never, I never thought that she or anyone would do anything with it. Did she talk specifically? She talked about her dreams on things. She talked about, you know, dreaming about, you know, going over there or being gone or attending funerals and shit like that. I, she's talked about killing, you know, she talked about, she talked about killing me, she talked about Stella, she talked about other people on there, it's just, I just thought it was just that. Have you ever talked to Stella about what happened to Desiree Sunford? I don't know if Paige is. See, no, we're talking about you not being a good liar. That was a bad lie. You weren't convincing at all. What does Stella know? I think she believes Paige did it. Well, what I don't know what makes you think that? Because that's the impression I've gotten from Stella on there. What, she kind what of, has Stella told you specifically? She thought Paige had someone do it, that Paige did it. After we found out about everything on there that had gone on. What do you mean by that, everything that had gone on? Finding out that Des was dead. I suspected at that time something. I thought for the longest time that Scott had done something, she thought Paige had done something. How did you hear about Desiree dying? I heard about it on the news because I followed Kaima and other sites over there for the Yakima news. I followed him since I started going over there for traffic and other things. Did you ever tell Stella that you did it for Paige? No. I never did. You never said that to Stella? No. So if I go talk to her, she's not that she's gonna go. She's she thinks it was all Paige. That's what she believes. That's the impression I got from her was that she thought Paige or Scott had done something on there with that. But Paige is one of the best friends. They've known each other for a long time, since high school, or before. So I don't know what she would tell you or not. Paige and Stella are best friends? Yeah. Still? Or have they had a falling out too? They've had falling outs come back together. Paige didn't talk to Stella for a long time. I didn't talk to Paige or Stella for a while. I didn't talk to Paige for a while. We've all had our bounds like friendships do and things. Do you remember Paige coming to talk to you about this a couple months ago? I remember Paige coming to talk to me at my wife's house, at my, my wife's place on there, being frantic and saying that Scott was cheating on her. I don't recall her saying anything. She's talked to me saying that you know, the cops had talked to her about this 
her being a person of interest on the, or the photo in Scotland before, because she had to take time off from work. This was a couple months ago that she, she said Scott was treating Yeah, she came, this caused problems for me and my wife, she came out there after we had stopped babysitting for her. She came out there, knocked on the door, wanted to talk to me, I mean, pulled me towards the back of the house down there and said that she'd found out that Scott had been seeing some other woman for like a year or so. And you know, she was saying that she loved me and all this. And my wife was hearing that and then she left. She was there for five minutes and just kind of blindsided me. I didn't know what the hell she was talking about because she was, she seemed frantic. I mean, she seemed like she was completely debased that something had gone on. Then she told me that, it's just like, she hadn't told me she loved me in quite some time. And she, but she never brought up uh, Desiree specifically? She's told me before that the, the police have talked to her about this, that she, I think she said she was pulled in somewhere down in the Tri-Cities when she was down there at Scott's dad's place, and Scott's down there at one point. They said that the cops had talked to her down there. So, I mean, it made sense she was involved with Scott. Do you recall a conversation at the end of July with Paige at the Starbucks uh, over on 17? Yeah. And do you recall her talking about this incident and asking you about evidence? I told her I had done nothing on that. Because she kept kind of insinuating on that. I thought she was just joking around on stuff. What did you think she was talking about? I thought she was trying to either vaz me or get me unsettled or something. I don't know. When she asked you about the jewelry box then, what, what did you think she was talking about? I honestly didn't know what jewelry box she was talking about. I thought she was talking about the one that she had, but... That she has? Yeah, she has a... I thought she has like a little jewelry box thing I've seen. What's it look like? It's just a little, I've seen it with a little metal jewelry box. What's the inside look like? I, it's like felt or something. Where did she say she got that from? I never asked her, she's had it the entire time I've known her. So, so she ha she's had it since before Desiree you got killed? I think so, but I, I mean, I've just seen her with that jewelry box on there since she moved into her place. Because so. she kept, she said, like, her ring and the necklace and all that, the jewelry that Scott got her. So. During that conversation, you told Paige that she was confusing dreams with reality. What did you mean by that? That she's often, before, she's gotten confused about things with me and her. Is she, you think she's just confused about this? Good. I think she's trying to pin something on me or use me as a scapegoat or patsy at this point. But I think she's used me. Why would she be so pissed off at you to throw you under the bus for a murder? I think she's always wanted me to be there to take care of her in case Scott ever ran out on her or ever left her. But Scott's not with her. Scott's with another woman. <clears throat> she felt betrayed when I got married. She didn't want me to get married. She even you know, was texting back and forth and told that to work on there because she said that the you know, two people that she loved most on there were me and Scott and that we both betrayed her. I think she felt betrayed by me getting married. So you've always been her protector? I've been her bills and all her money, always there for her? You forgot fixing up her house, fixing up her plumbing, finding her a place to live, moving her butt in there, moving stuff out of storage for her when the bills were running out on there, without bankrupting myself to take care of her on there because I did love her. Right, you're always her protector. And Paige appreciated that. She didn't tell the money started running out. But you've always been there for her. If somebody crossed her, you took care of her. You made comments. Hey, you want me to take care of that? You want me to take care of them? And all of a sudden, 
Desiree is dead. She was a problem with Scott and Paige's relationship. You're the one that probably took care of him. I've given her help. I've tried to be there for her because I wanted a relationship with her. I've been a fool for trying that because every single person in my life, everyone out there where I worked, everyone told me to stay away from her. And like a moth to a flame, I kept going back and trying to help her even after her own mother told me I probably shouldn't be her friend anymore. I've tried to help her on there. I've taken care of things by giving her money, by trying to help out her friends, doing things like that for us. how I've taken care of things for her. I was taking care of things for her financially. You know, I took her and her friends out to meals and dinners and things like that. I was fucking banker for them. And that's how I got to know Stella and, De Stella and Deborah and all these people. I didn't have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of friends on there. And I've tried to help. I've tried to help Paige because I thought that she was a mother and a person on there that needed help. I thought she was in a bad relationship with Dylan. I thought she was in a relationship with Dylan on there. I tried to help her with that. Tried to help get her out. Tried to get her a different place to stay, different places to live. I was living with my dad so I couldn't move her in then. Otherwise, I probably would have tried to then. And she wanted me to find her a place to live, so I found her a place to live on there. And I helped out with other friends and other things on there by, you know, helping her pay off her debts and other things on there. She spent money left and right on there for things. I never had money to feed the kids and everything like that, so I put groceries in her house. Because I fell in love with Cloud and I fell in love with Philip on there. So I wanted them to have a better life on there than just nothing. I didn't want them to be taken away from her because I worried what would happen to her because I knew what her first husband had done to her. You know, he'd taken her daughter from her and that had nearly ended her on there. And I knew the second person that she had a kid with on there, just up and left on there, left with Cloud. And the third person that she got involved with on there left with Dante. And he got taken away by his father on there. I always wanted to help on there because I thought that she was a beautiful person on there that had a really shitty life. And all I tried to do was give her anything that she asked for from me. Anything financially that I could do, anything physically I could do to help give her shelter. Give her so comfort. you gave her your Glock to commit the murder? She asked for the gun. She asked for the gun. I thought she wanted it for protection. If after everything you've done for her, after all the money, blood, sweat, tears, and love that you gave to her, and she turned around and fucked you over, maybe she, if she drew you into driving her to Yakima in your rental car, and didn't, you didn't know what was going to go bad, now's the time to tell us. I wasn't there. I didn't go to Yakima. You gave her the gun, you gave her the car, and she's saying that, no, you did this, you did that. You drove the rim of cardiac. It was your gun. And guess what? The barrel of that gun is in your possession. And the gun's in your wife's van. The gun's in my wife's van. It is. And she's willing to testify in court then. That you're the one that did it. And confess to her that you did it. These, uh, these pieces of evidence isn't connected to her at all. That's it's exactly on your shoulders. And you're trying to throw it back to her? So the, the time for protecting her, or maybe even you think you're trying to protect your own ass by giving only part of the story, that, that time is long past. Now's the time for the 100% truth, verifiable truth, that we can tie... You can't verify anything I say or that she says on there because if it's just me and her, it's my word against hers and anything, isn't it? Unless there's forensics. Is there... There was an a unknown male DNA found 
at the crime scene. Okay. It's not Scott's. We already tested against that. Is there any chance that your DNA is going to be there? I was in the house a month before that. Besides that, I don't think so. Did you have any contact with Desiree? Did you have any contact with Physical contact. So you give us a DNA sample? Yeah. If you want a DNA sample from me, go for it. You want to do that right now? I just have to have a spot. Of course you do. Because, you know, this is an answer to a question that you want, so... I'm swab inside of my cheek. Yeah. I don't have a container for it, so I have to get my car and get it. I've got boxes. You got a box? Yeah. And just to be clear, you, you're consenting to give us the swabs, but I need just so there's no, no question. I also I have a search warrant to obtain two oral DNA swabs mm -hmm. from you, so... We're going to take the swabs pursuant to the search warrant, not your permission, mm -hmm. so that you can't revoke. No question. Uh, you got one of the boxes in your head? I'm sorry I lied to you about stuff earlier. Damn. Well, Oh, me too. I mean, I only wanted to protect her. Now is not the time to be doing that because I tell you completely and honestly, not playing the game. She has freaking thrown you under the bus, sold you out, told us all of her version of the truth, done it. Just a receipt saying confirming that we took those. She's gonna kill me. Who? Paige. Why? She thinks I crossed you, she's gonna kill me. Well, I don't know how you crossed her. She's the one that brought your name into it. She's betrayal is something very funny on me. She probably thought I'd just die for her and tell you anything you want to do to me. She would think that you would just kind of fall on the sword for her, so to speak, and, and take the blame for it? I bet she does. She probably would have too a while ago. It was Scott with her? When she came and got your car? I drove to her house. She was alone at the house. She dropped me back off at my place. Was Scott around during that time? I thought he was supposed to be over that weekend. But she told you he was coming over? He was over there most weekends. He would get away from Des telling her he was out of town doing things. He was over there every weekend, every other weekend down there. Did you see your gun? That weekend? No. 
I hadn't seen it since I gave it to her, and I hadn't seen it until she gave it back. How did you get the barrel back? It was in the gun, and I changed, changed it back because she wanted one that was threaded. And I talked about silences and suppressors before. She always said she had someone that could get her something. But the barrel that we have is threaded. Mm -hmm. So when when did you get the threaded barrel back? That was on the gun when I got it back. And did you provide it to her? And when exactly did you provide it? She asked when she wanted the gun originally on there, she asked for a threaded barrel with it if I had one because she knew that I had had an interest in suppressors. So she asked if I had one like that. I said yes. She asked if she could get that. I thought it was kind of weird. Did she describe to you why she would want a suppressor? No. I figured she was going to go shooting something. She talked about where she was going on her road trip that night when she dropped you off? She just said she was going, she was going out of town. But she'll be back in a few hours. When did she return? I was, I don't know why she returned on there because she dropped the car off in the night. She said someone could pick her up on her. She just didn't want to go out of town with the car. Do you have any idea what time that was? I was up five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, the car was back. So she had the car from 10 until that time, as far as I know. I say the windows on the car, though, and everything else was cool, so I imagine it'd been there a while. So you are, woke up five to six o'clock that morning, and the car was there? Yeah. She, she said she was... You never saw her? No. She said she was going to drop it back off. And that's at your dad's place? Yeah. She said she would leave the keys inside of the door on my side, which is the north side, which she did. I was saying she got the keys for that. <clears throat> After that, did she talk about Desiree's murder with you? She said it was fitting on there. I found it ironic on there that it had happened on there. She said it made things easier because she thought she was pregnant with Scott's kid around that time. Did she talk to you about being uh, pregnant with Scott's kid before the murder? She indicated that she was pregnant on there and that Scott was the father. And did she? I was happy for her and then because she had told me that he and her had wanted children. Did she discuss how, how Desiree was going to feel about that? No. She said, well, not that Desiree was going to feel, she said that if she found out that she would leave Scott. So I thought, okay, here's your opportunity to get her out of the picture. I thought she would just, you know, message her, talk to her, tell her something on there, get her out of the picture. So I always thought that she wanted Des gone, she wanted Scott to herself because they talked about, you know, building a house and building things together and doing things and opening up businesses and doing all that stuff, you know, having a long life together. So I always thought, unless they talked about children and things like that, and this happened early because she said it was a year or so before mm -hmm. her plan, because they were like planning to have children, and she was planning to get pregnant at the end of this year, apparently, or in this year instead of last year. If you're, well, if she described you as being her, one of her best friends, and you just, say that you are in love with her and you do just about anything for her up to a limit, I don't believe that if she went and did this terrible thing, I don't believe that she would come back and not tell you about it. So, and I can see the wheels turning right now. If she came back and described to you or and Stella, then now is the time to tell me about that story. Because she's already told me 
Paige has already told me that Stella knows all about it. Of course she would say that. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So what's the story? I don't know what Paige would have said. I don't know what story she's told Stella. I want the truth. I want what you know or what you've heard. What have you heard from Paige? What have you seen from Paige? Stop. You're still holding stuff back. I can see it. Well, you need to you need to drop that shit real quick because that little boy that was in the doorway when we picked you up, mm -hmm. you want to go home to him at some point, right? Yes, I do. Of course I do. I'm so now... Him and my wife. So who Who is it more important to you, Paige or that little boy? That little boy's my world. Then so, give up the world with Paige and tell us the truth. We can see you're holding it back. I can put you on a polygraph right now and you're dropping it. I'm going to do well. I know. So come on. The time is now to give up Paige and think about that little guy and your wife and your future. Like I told you in the beginning, it hangs on you for your future. Protecting Paige is not helping you at all. I never wanted to know too much about what had happened. I didn't want to know because I didn't want to think that what I do know, what she has indicated on there, was that she had this arranged for someone to do it. I always thought that it was Dylan in all likelihood because she was, because he shot people for her before apparently. That someone, there were some incidents where someone came after him when they were living here and he had killed someone or shot someone, although she had said, and that he would always defend her. I always kind of figured she had arranged for him to go, her to go, or someone to go and do this. Well, that story doesn't wash water because we know what's going on with Dylan and we know that he was involved in a homicide. So don't try to blame it on him. I'm not trying to blame him. I'm just saying that's what I'd always thought. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's what she'd always said, that he'd done that. I don't know who she had arranged. I don't know if she did it herself or not. I always figured that she had. I never wanted to say anything or do anything with it. What did she say about it? She told, me, told, told you more than you're telling us. She always said on there that We're trying to think so hard and make up stories just tell us the truth. It's going to help you a lot in here, because that's what you know. I don't know who did it. I thought Paige had done it. That's all I thought. Well, I thought that Scott had done it, but I don't know. I'm not interested in your speculation. I'm interested in, in what, what Paige I told you. Paige told you more than you're saying, and I can see that written all over your face. You just won't come out with it. And now I now I gotta believe it's because it's you're not we've already established that you're more concerned about your son than Paige. Paige is basically trying to bend you over this table, and so the concern for her is out the window. So you're you must be trying to protect yourself. That's all all I can figure. I didn't have any. I didn't go kill anyone. I didn't go shoot anyone. Okay. I believe that part. That sounded believable. What do you know? Fine. What I know is that Paige had this arranged. That's all I know. How do you know that? Because I put two and two together on all this. And because I've seen enough of what she's done, what she's told me she's done in the past, and what I've seen on there. She told me she used to run gangs and drugs and things here in Moses Lake. She said she had hundreds of people taken care of on there, up to an extent. That I don't, I never believed because I thought that was bullshit. That's what she said. You can believe me or not, I don't care. I can see you don't believe this written on your face just as plain. I'm as struggling with it because you've been screwing around with this for over an hour. 
Yeah, I know. I thought she had it. I believe she had this arranged. She talked about her knuckle though, having this arranged. She talked about, you heard her talk she about? She talked about getting her out of the way. She talked about it would be better if she was gone. She kept talking about that. And then she turns up dead on there. Did she say that she wanted her dead? A couple times she had insinuated that she wanted her gone. I, after the fact, I thought she meant dead because Des turned up dead. Did she ever approach you and say, would you be willing to kill her for me? No, she didn't. Because I've given her help, I've given her resources on her, but I'm not a killer. Did, I she, don't go, did she ever come to you and ask, did she say, she felt this me is out. my plan? She felt me out on there before all of this on there. How, I mean, how did she find out? She was asking me about, you know, what would I be willing to do? How far would I be willing to go for things on there? You know, I gave her help. I gave her resources and stuff on there. I said I would always try to protect her on there. But she's thrown me under the bus on things since I have no reason to do that. That's right. She borrowed my gun. She borrowed the car on there. She gave it back later. I didn't know if she'd killed anyone or not. But putting two to two together like a person on there, I, I had reasonable intelligence on there. I did figure that, hey, she'd probably done this on there. When did you first make that connection in your mind? After she gave the gun back and other things and details of the case started coming out on the news and things like that. What kind of details did you have? Just stuff in the news. Paige looking at articles. She'd look at it on her phone when I was around. Things like that. She looked at it a couple times since then. She would check on it periodically. I looked at it periodically a couple times myself, just like, what's going on with this? Because, hey, it's the only person I ever knew that got murdered, that I actually haven't met in my life. So I looked it up a couple times on there. So what do you know about the murder scene? I saw the photos of the outside of the place on there. I saw the reports that said that she was shot. I think it said she was shot, but kind of thing else you're asking about guns on there and all that, too. I know that Scott was sitting outside on there when he, when he called the cops and all that stuff. I knew some of the details from what he had said about that, what she had told me about what he had done when he got back. That's about all I know. I've been in the house one time. I've gone through there. They took me on a tour. I don't know if that was just, I went there because Lorene wasn't doing good. You know, they had her committed and everything else on there, and I was wanting to get out of that because I couldn't keep going over there because I thought she was just going to OD and everything else on there. I didn't want to be a part of that anymore. Scott wasn't being around anymore, so I went over to the place one time to ask, you know, what's going on with this? Will you, you going to help this old lady out or not anymore? And pretty much it was, she wasn't anymore. That's the only reason why I ever got involved over there with that was Paige introduced me to them. Paige introduced me to Lorreen on there. I bought her Christmas. I was trying to help her. I was trying to be a nice guy because I saw this old lady that need, wanted help and needed help. That's what I did with that. I knew where Scott lived and everything else on there because I got the address and everything else. I didn't kill anyone. She's fucking pinning this shit on me. You said that it, it makes sense to you that Stella would be, uh, that Paige would say Stella knows the story. Why do you say that? Why do you think that, that makes sense? Stella's been a junkie and everything else on there. She would probably do anything Paige asked because she's known Paige longer than me. Kicking Stella off my phone plan and everything else on there. I paid her bill for a year on that too. So if we go to Stella and Stella says Marty did it, do you think it's because Paige put her up to it? Wouldn't surprise me if she did. You know, she calls me her brother and everything else on there, but push comes to shove on there, she would choose Paige over me. I'm disposable with them in all likelihood. Do you think there's a chance that Stella's going to say it was you? That this was all a plan orchestrated by Paige and you were the tool that she used to do the job? I don't know what Stella would say. I know what the truth is. I know what I've done and I haven't done. You be willing to take a polygraph or that? If you want to give me a polygraph, go ahead. Maybe pass it. I don't know.
I don't take a polygraph. I don't know if I pass or not. I believe I would on that because I'm telling the truth. You know, if I were to ask Detective Carl to take a polygraph regarding the murder of Jesse Sunford, he would have said, yeah. You know, I asked him, would that show that you're lying or telling the truth? He'll say that he had nothing to do with her death. And He's in a calm true. frame of mind. I'm not calm right now. I mean, you want to pick apart words and odd phrases on there and use to try to pick apart things on there to say that I did something or didn't do something. No, it's just a simple yes or no question. Did you kill her? But no, I did not. Did your DNA going to be found in that house? Probably because I've been in there once. Well, that's just once. I went all over that house. Scott took me on a tour. He insisted on it. You were just walking around. Where was Desiree during that time? They were packing. They were loading up his charger and they were going out of town for something. I think they were coming to Moses Lake because they spent weekends with their parents. Did you have any physical contact with Desiree? Shook her hand, introduced myself. That's all the contact I had with her. Got the door for her on the way out when she was carrying out luggage. That was it. <clears throat> so if we could arrange to get a polygraph here, would you be willing to take a polygraph? Sure, why not? The way polygraphs work is that there are no word games. I was uh, yes or no questions on exactly. there. Exactly. It's, it's not enough very simple. Though. It's getting all and it's testing on it. I understand what a polygraph is. I understand how they work. So you've re you've researched them a little bit. You know about polygraphs. I've researched them before. I mean, the kid was interested in science, interested in a lot of things in technology. Okay, so you're familiar with it. I'm familiar with the polygraph test, yes. Okay, and you'd be willing to take one? Of course. I have no reason to hide anything on there. I was hiding things, trying to protect Paige on there because I didn't want to hurt her. I have no reason to hide anything anymore. I have to protect my wife, I have to protect my son. I can't protect others. When did you come to the conclusion that you say saying adding two plus two, that I gave her the gun, I gave her the car, and she must have done it. When did that hit you? A couple months after I got everything back. A couple months after you left? After I got everything back, after I got the gun back, after I got everything Okay. I didn't want. So, I didn't want to think. So a couple months after that, you go away, and I think maybe she minutes. has something to do with this. Okay. I figured she was and, involved. And Desiree is the only person you ever known that was a murder victim. Why? And I didn't go to the cops. I didn't go to the police or anything on them. Yeah. Why? I didn't want to think she had done it. Why did you keep the barrel? Why would, I why would I throw it away? Why would you throw it away? You asked me why I would keep it. Why would I throw it away? I had not heard it was used in a murder. It's against you. You've got possession of the barrel. It's your rental car. Why not come to the authority and say, hey, wait a minute. I'm not involved in this, but something's happening here. I didn't want to hurt her. You're still protecting her? I was at that time when I had that, yeah. You still are now? Probably on some level, yeah. When we first started our conversation, that you, you said that you've had that barrel for over for just one year? I've had that barrel for a long time. I don't know how long I've had it. I bought the barrel. I threw it on a shelf. Did you buy it new? I bought it online. From normal? Yeah. Did you have it shipped to your house or yep. to basic American foods? To my house. And you do remember that now? I knew it when I told you that. I was hiding it because I didn't want to implicate Paige.
I know you can probably get rid of perjury or anything else on here. But just throw me under the bus here and you've made it pretty clear on here that I can't try it. Do you remember approximately when you bought it online? I have had that bill for a couple of years. Time goes by pretty fast. I think I've had that bill three years. You can check on that, I'm sure you will. Do you have any other barrels for that Glock? No. The, the rest of the Glock that's in your wife's van, it doesn't have a barrel? It does, it has the original barrel. Oh, okay. Again, I was only interested in buying the silencer after the, the my new law was going to be changing and all that. So, whatever the law changed in the state, that you could again buy a silencer. So you can figure out one of those. Did you also get a page of suppressor for that guy? No, I never bought one. Did you try to make one? Did that work? No. I never used the tool shop out there. Did your dad have burn barrels behind his house or on, yes, his, on his property? Yes, he does have burn barrels. Did you burn any clothes out there in the burn barrels? From time to time. Why would you burn them? Ratty old jeans and things like that. What else would I do with them? I don't know. Give them a good run. I don't know. I cost gas. We burn plastic. We burn all kinds of things. I know it's against the law, but just anything. So there, we may find some burned clothing in those burn barrels? I don't know if you'll find anything in there or not. I haven't been there in a while. Any chance we'd find burned clothing pages size? I can't imagine why you would have never burned any of her clothing. Even after uh, that night when, she, when the car came back, you and Paige didn't burn clothes in the burn barrels of your aunt's? I wasn't with Paige that night. She dropped the car back off. She didn't ask me to dispose of any clothing after that. She had on to the gun for another month or two on there and then she returned it. She said that the clothes were burned at your dad's. The clothes that were worn during the murder were burned at your dad's. She didn't ask me to burn anything. I didn't burn any clothes at my dad's. You wear Dr. Scholl's shoes? I have previously on there. It's probably still at my dad's if I have them. What size? Uh, it varies on there from, I've worn from a 12 to a 14 on there usually. 12 to 14? It depends on the style and fit. You ever wear Dr. Scholl's with the Velcro over the top? No, actually I don't. I don't like the Velcro shoes. Have you ever had any? I don't think so. This, I always buy tie-up this up shoes because I don't like the way Velcro shoes fix. I always find them loose. They don't, I like them tight on my ankle. I have weak ankles from being when I was a kid, so I don't, I don't buy the Velcro ones because they're really not my style. There, was, there were some bloody shoe prints left at the crime scene the night of the murder. And they were Dr. Scholl's, obviously. Since you're asking, yeah. What are the odds you think that those will match your side split? I don't know. I don't have shoes like that anymore. I have bought them previously on them, but I wasn't there. So they shouldn't match my feet. I don't know who did this, so I don't know what size they have. You have two pairs of Dr. Scholl's at your dad's house? I think I have one left, I'm not sure. I have numerous work boots or anything else there still, I think, but... Is there anything else that you think that we should know about what happened to Desiree Sunford? Or anything that Paige has told you, or any rumors you've heard, anything you think we should know about what happened? I don't know what else I can tell you on there. All I can do is tell you the truth on here because, yeah, I was trying to cover for Paige the, I believe that she did it or had someone do it. I didn't drive her anywhere that night. 
I didn't go there that night. I didn't shoot Desiree. I've never shot at anyone or shot anyone. The most I've ever was shot at was rabbits as a kid. And a llama. That's it. There's no chance that you drove Paige to Moxie or East Valley that night? I did not drive Paige anywhere that night. Did you lie? So it wouldn't be your shoe prints at that scene? There's no way it could be on the side of the there. I didn't go there. I didn't shoot anyone. And, and were you aware of a plan to kill Desiree Sunford prior to her being killed? No. Looking back on it, I probably should have been. Just looking back on what she'd asked for and everything else on there. Was Scott ever involved in these conversations? about Desiree needing to go away or be gone or... He was never there when she talked about anything on there. Not none of her comments were around him about that, so I don't know what he knows. I don't know if she wanted to keep him insulated from that or not. Because she talked about polygraphs and other things before on there too. And she felt like she could pass one? I believe she did. I think she wanted him to be able to pass one. Wanted him? Why would he need to be able to pass one? Well, that's kind of an obvious question, isn't it? The husband's a prime suspect in any murder of the spouse. Yeah, but he didn't give this girl a gun. No. Didn't give her a car. Didn't have the right shoe size. No. I don't know size Scott shoes, though. We do. Of course you do. Like I said, you decide to take little branches off, even though we know the questions and the answers. Yeah, you. I mean, well, you know my. Did you know my shoe size before you came in here? I've worn between size 12 and 14 shoes. So you're willing to go to jail for this young lady? You're willing to go in front of a judge and tell him or her that you gave him the gun, you let her use your car, you have the right shoe size, your DNA may or may not be in the house, and then she's willing to go into court saying, you said this, you said that, and all the evidence is basically on your shoulders. I didn't kill anyone. I didn't drive her there. I didn't go there. But you know what happened. You just don't want to tell us everything. I you're walking You're walking up to the edge. And we're asking you to go to the edge. Mm -hmm. Walk through the door. It's inside the truth. And you're refusing to do that. That's what we're seeing right now. You're willing to do everything to save Paige. You're willing to sacrifice everything. What kind of a person would I be if I did that? Well, you're 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 commendable for protecting Paige, and you're willing to take it all the way to the end. That's what I see. Do you really believe that I'm that much of a fool? Well, because what other world? I'm is giving you every opportunity you can to tell us the truth. Detective Carl's giving you every opportunity. And you piss away every time you get to a certain point. But then again, you get a little clarity and you go, oh, okay. Yeah, I gave her the gun. Oh, okay, I've added up things. Do you ever do you ever want to think anyone that you knew was capable of this? Of but I'm not gonna go to jail for him. No. I'm not going to jail for him. I didn't drive over there. I'm not yeah. saying I'm not necessarily saying you drove her. You know exactly what happened, Marty. You know exactly what happened. How would I know exactly what happened? Because you're involved up to your eyeballs in this case. All the evidence is on your shoulders right now. And a and a statement from a from somewhat relent yeah. Now we're gonna send your swab to the lab. You know that's gonna happen. 
But we already have the gun now. Mm -hmm. And well, by now we've got the gun. Yeah. Because we've got teams looking through your house and your dad's house. We didn't come over here. There's 15 people involved in this investigation mm -hmm. going on right now. Of course. You just all coordinate on there in case you think I'm going to hide evidence. That's logically what you would do. It's logically yep. what I would do. And you're willing to take it to the edge, protecting Paige. You're willing to take the fall for this case right now. I don't want to take the fall for this case. Because you're a hand and foot. Your, your, your foot is in our hand. We have you. Mm -hmm. You're going to jail. So you can protect Paige all you want. I didn't kill anyone. But you're going to jail. What are you going to arrest me for? For screen work? Unless you want to tell us the truth. You would have the shackled me. And truth. You would have shackled me and taken me out of that house a lot differently on there. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But after what you've told us for the last hour and a half, I don't think there's any doubt in Detective Peralt's mind that you're going to jail. And you're protecting Paige. What we're trying to get to is the truth. the truth. The truth. That's it. We want to know the truth about what happened to Desiree Sunford and why. That's what we're trying to get to. Plain and simple. That's what led us here to talk to you. What led you here is Paige implicating me. She's probably an anonymous tipster and everything else. I don't know if that person even existed. Because you could have lied about that. Is, would you describe Paige as being pretty brilliant? Is she smart? Yes, she is. So she orchestrated this whole thing where from the beginning she's talking to you about Desiree needs to go. And then she just happens to borrow your car, which just happens to be a rental during the time that Desiree is killed. She just happens to have your gun on it with the barrel she got from you that's threaded for a silencer. And then she plays it cool for a year and a half or however long it was, and then all of a sudden, boom, the revelation it was Marty. That was all planned from the beginning, you think? She's that, she's that brilliant, maniacal. I think she feels betrayed by me. Because you married Elizabeth. From her text messages, from what she told me on there for things, for her accusing me of sexual harassment at work on there. I don't know when she did this, when she talked to you guys. I don't know. Scott's, Scott's betrayed her too. He came, she came running right to you saying, Scott's living with another woman. Why she not? that she was cheating on her, yeah. Why not throw him under the bus and put the gun in his hand? I don't know. Maybe from the beginning she planned to play me. I don't know. She knew Scott before she knew me on there. She wanted to have children with him. I think she just wanted me to be the fall guy for all this. I would think I was a pawn in all of this. Trying to use me to get what she could out of me to get this done. Wow. Why did you have a rental car? I had a car accident. You had a car accident? Yeah. Why wouldn't that show up on the Carfax for your car? It should. Because I looked it up and there's no collision on there. Um, when was the collision? It was the couple of days before I was coming back from um, I was over in Yakima on there, I, was getting, I, was, I think I was visiting Lori. Came back, uh, there was a uh, um, coyote that ran across the road on there. I swerved to avoid it on there. I hit three highway, those reflective markers on there. I had damage to the uh, hood and the side of my car. Okay, was it reported to law enforcement? Uh, no, I just called my insurance on it. What body shop fixed your car? Uh, I think the Inland Auto here in Moses Lake, but I don't recall. Yeah. Who did, did you get your rental car for? My insurance arranged it. Where did you drop it off? Your memory has gotten better as we went. Again, you're a sharp guy. Where, where I did dropped you drop it off at the airport. I think it's Hertz. I don't know. Hertz. 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 
would it serve? It's whatever ones out at the airport by the gas tanks out of the aviation. How, how many are out there? Are are there a whole bunch? I, I'm not familiar with Moses Lake. Is it a wide rental car company out there? Or? I don't know. Either. I'm not familiar with the airport. I just think it's Hertz because I think that's the one that's out there. Okay. So I picked up the car. Or the, I think they dropped off the car because they sent someone, some blonde-haired kid to pick me up from the body shop. And who's your insurance company? It's either Geico or Progressive at the time. I don't remember. I think probably Progressive from the time frame. Okay. And you feel confident that you're telling us 100% of the truth now? We've gotten past all the... What do you want to ask me? Is there anything on there? Any other questions? Anything that you think that I was... Have you been dishonest with us? I was about, you know, the gun bills and all that stuff on there because I was trying to protect Paige. Okay. So, but everything that we've clarified and all... You've told us everything you know about this incident. Is that fair to say? No, I would say that I believe from Paige's statements and other things on there, no, I haven't told you everything on there that I could possibly know. Okay, so what, what haven't you told us? She didn't want to go shoot him when she was pregnant. She was pregnant at the time on him. I know where I was at during the time frame on I know where I was at my dad's house. Was, do you have any siblings? My sister. She doesn't live there. Okay. So there's no one you can, no one was home with you that you recall? I don't even know if my dad was home. I don't recall if he was there or not. Okay. He drives for Swift, which you already know if you're out of his house. Okay. So, so. Um, continuing on, she didn't want to shoot when she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's why she wanted the sound. She said something about noise in the baby. So I don't know. But I don't, I don't know if she was there or not to do it. I don't know who did it. I think she wanted to set me up. I think you believe that either I did it or I think you believe that I was there or involved on there because I was madly in love with her. And I can tell you, I honestly was madly in love with her. I probably will always be in love with her in one, to one extent or another in my life. She was one of the first people I ever actually, you know, really fell madly in love with. I'd had other people that I loved, but I loved her with everything that I had on there. But I never would go anywhere, I never could. Okay, so I can believe that maybe maybe you weren't there. Maybe you, you did not kill someone. You seem pretty passionate about that. What I still have trouble with is the fact that you had no idea that Paige was planning this, that she didn't get you roped in to helping her set this up. That's where I think maybe you've held back some, some of your knowledge is that maybe she had discussed this in a little more detail about what she was going to do and how she was going to do it. And maybe there was even some discussion on how to best cover her tracks. What she had talked about before on there was planning a car accident for Des, that, her, that she had thought of that before. I don't know how she planned to set that up. I don't know. She talked that she had tried to get Des to stage an accident on there where they would, she would set up for her to be dead after all that, trying to get her to collect insurance money, trying to set up some claim or something on there. That's what she had told me before on there, which I thought was pretty cold, but she was telling me that. Mm -hmm. I didn't... I didn't kill anyone. I didn't go there and kill anyone. Did you know that Desiree was going to be killed prior to her being killed? No. You're certain? I'm certain I didn't know that she was going to die. I didn't know that she was going over there, that anyone was going over there to kill her. Looking back on it, I should have. Yeah, I'm blind. I'm a fool. I'm an idiot on there for all that. What I know about what Paige had set up for Des or anything else on there before was that Paige had talked to me that her, that 
she had talked to Scott about you know, trying to set up for the insurance thing. I don't know if Scott knew or if Paige, which one and all that, but they were just, she tried before to get her to either kill herself in that accident or in an accident on there. She also talked about, you know, summer riding and things like that and how easy it would be to just take someone out when they were doing that. But what about the bunker? The bunker? Mm-hmm. Paige wanted me to find a place that was remote on the for her to go shooting once. I found a place out in Adams County. In Adams County? Yeah. She didn't want to go, she couldn't go shooting at my dad, so she didn't want other people coming out there to go shooting. I used to know uh, people out there, Lee and Cindy Ethington on there, some of the kids, you know, told me, hey, you know, kids go shooting over here in this area on there. What is this place in Adams County? Um, do you have a map? You can bring it? Well, I know, I had you, but we started to get one for you, but I mean, what is it? Um, I think it's off of Harrington Road. It's just a couple of old grain silos. It was like an old farm set. It was oh, okay. knocked down. It's just grain silos? Yes. Yeah, Nothing of, in the ground. Can buildings up still? Uh, some of the silos are up. The paneling, all that's starting to come off. And it's just like an old dilapidated thing from like the 50s as well. Oh, it's like, there's places littered with shell casing, shotgun shells, beer bottles, you know, signs of bonfires. It's you know, just a place where kids have gone out there just to go horsing around is what it looks like. I knew about that on there. Paige wanted to go shooting on there. We nicknamed it the bunker because she'd never been out there before. And I think it's like old fuel tanks and all that. Can you go, is there a place you can go underneath, underground? No, I don't think you can go in there. You used to have to take a ladder or something. Because the bunker, the, the fuel tanks, they're probably eight, ten feet tall. If you had a ladder, you can go down? And probably. Up. So we kind of we said it looked like a bunker. Have you ever gone down in them? No. I've been out there. Before you told me that you have never gone shooting with Paige. No, she wanted a place to go shooting. We talked about shooting and all that. I didn't have any guns. What's so you never took her there? I took her there once because she wanted to see it. Oh. Well, well, you didn't shoot? No. When, so when she was still pregnant at the time. Talked to Starbucks when Paige asked you about the bunker. Mm -hmm. Is that the place you're talking about? Yeah, I think that's what she was referencing on there. Is there another bunker? No. Like it's the only like a grain silo. There's grain silos at that location, there, but we have that's the only place we ever referred to as a bunker was those fuel tanks there, because it looked like a bunker. We talked about you know doomsday scenarios and zombie apocalypse scenarios and things like that a lot. So when she was talking to you at Starbucks, she said, um, "I might need to go to the bunker because I have something I need to hide." Mm -hmm. Would you take that to mean? that she was going to dump something out there. Is that a place where you guys are taking stuff before or hidden stuff? I've never taken anything out there. She, we, when we went out there, she said that it would look like a place where you guys dump stuff off on because there's all kinds of crap out there. There's old appliances, there's people had gone shooting up anything and everything. So. so it's a dumping ground? It's kind of what it looks like. It's just kind of like... Probably as many square footage as this police department area on there. Grain silos off to the side over here. Looks like an old homestead here. And the fuel tanks on this side on there. There's a couple of uh, two foot, two and a half foot access points on the top. Looks like old uh, you know, access points when they're building it. And then with instrumentation, pumps and everything else ran into. So. So is it, do you have any reason to think that there would be any evidence of this? murder out there? If she was referring to dumping things out there, maybe she dumped something out there. So it's possible you could go looking out there, but I don't know if you'd find anything. It could be buried, it could be dumped in there, it could have been burned, I don't know. Anything, nothing would surprise me at this point with that. Okay. Now, is there anything that you've left out, anything we need to clarify, anything that you haven't been completely honest about, anything you know about that we should know about, anything at all? 
Are you satisfied now that everything's on the table? All the cards are on the table. You've told us the truth about everything. There's nothing else that... Um, from that time frame on, the page asked me to keep a computer monitor and cable of Scott's for a while on there in storage. I did, and then she asked for it back on there, because apparently he was building a system for his friend Ryan. I thought it looked like the one that was in his house. But Just she a said, regular computer monitor? It was a flat screen monitor and a cable for it, HDMI cable for it. Was there, was there anything else that she had you hold? She had to hold those two items. Did she get them back? Yes, she did, because uh, Scott was building a computer system for his friend Ryan, about six months ago on there, he wanted to use the monitor for that. It was give or take on the time frame. Did she ever say anything to you or give you an iPad to hold? No. She's she never had an iPad to my knowledge. Is there any chance that you wound up with one of Scott's 1911 45 pistols? I had a 1911 pistol myself at one point. I don't have any currently. Did did you get it from Scott? No, I bought it from uh, Tri-State Outfitters here in town. Okay. It was a single stack 1911 standard. I didn't know that Scott owned any 1911s. I thought he had a 2011s double stack. That was his uh, carry weapon that he always had. Yeah, he had a 1911 that was taken. What are, did Paige or Scott ever say anything to you about the burglary that happened at his house the week before Desiree was killed? She made a comment after that it was convenient. She... Did she clarify that or give it any context? Um, for Des having been murdered on this, she said it was convenient. She said that she thought someone was trying to get information on them. I asked her why anyone would be trying to get information on her. She said she didn't know. She always indicated on there she thought she was going to die young. That Desiree or Paige? Paige. Paige thought she would die? She thought someone was trying to get information on her or Scott or something on there. I don't know why, because she said the items that she knew was taken on there led her to believe that someone was trying to get information. Mm -hmm. She said something about why did they take electronics and stuff when his guitars and everything else were more easy to pawn. Which I didn't make any sense to me, but I just recall her saying that. Okay. So is everything that you've told us now true and correct to the best of your knowledge? As far as I know, yes. Is there anything else that you want to ask me? I want to know anything you know about Desiree Sunford uh, being killed or any plan that was in place to kill Desiree Sunford. So what I'm saying is, even if there's something that I didn't think to ask, mm -hmm. I want you to tell me everything. My brain, basically. Yes. So even I don't want to play word games. Yeah. If, I, if I didn't ask the specific right question to get you to say something, mm -hmm. then... I'm, Come out with it. I know, because I mean, my, I can tell you honestly, my things, I, I just pull back and clam up on things. I'm, I mean, I'm nervous as all hell about this. Okay, and that's what, I don't want you to clam up. I want you to tell us everything, because, like, like I say, we want to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. And if it's true that Paige is framing you and setting you up from the beginning, then I want to have as much information as possible to be able to prove that. How could you not? Well, that's what. That's why we, that's, we need to know everything. It, every little piece of information builds on something else. One little phone call led me to the gun barrel that was used to kill Desiree. You never know what piece of information is gonna be the domino that makes the whole thing fall. I get that, but you know, what's going through my mind here is this is stuff that happened, you know, a year and a half ago on there. It's my word against hers on all of it on there. 
that was going through my head is that I'm screwed for life here and I've done nothing. At least I think I've done nothing on them. Because I live alone, I lived alone on there. And I mean, I'm struggling with my own mind on there trying to come up with anything I can think of on there that I can use to prove that I'm innocent on there. And it's hard on there because I can't think of anything that leaves a paper trail or anything that I can give you on there that can say, yeah, this is what happened on there with everything. Okay, well, so I, I just got one question. Uh, and that's all I have. So after everything Detective Prawl was talking about, you see the pattern of our conversation on the last two hours. Uh, last two hours, yeah. We knew the questions, mm -hmm. and we knew the answers. Before you ever asked, yeah. All right. And you still lied to us. You still lied to us. So my question is... How do you know I'm not lying now? Oh, well, you are lying. I don't know. You're willing to go to prison for Paige. That's how I see it. I don't want to go to you're, prison you're, for her. You're, you're, willing to, you're willing to sacrifice everything to protect her. You've protected her all your adult life, as long as you know her, as far as everything I can tell. Even to the point where you, as a smart individual, came up with the answer saying, shit, she's involved. My gun was involved. But I kept the gun. And you lied to us about everything up until about 35 minutes into this interview, you finally said, shit, this is what I better start telling you the truth. I don't want to die for something. I don't want to go to jail for something I didn't do. I mean, every time he comes up with a little more thing about a conversation you had, where do you think he got that information? He would have got from Paige or something on there for information that she had or you guys' investigation or other people or something on there. You might have gone through so, every record and every everything on there. You Just before we turn off the tape recorder, mm -hmm. you had no knowledge of the murder? I you know, don't know who did it. I have no knowledge of, I have no prior knowledge of the murder on there. I did put two and two together and figure that Paige had probably done it after the fact on there. And I did not come forward with that. And I should have. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill Des. I didn't drive Paige there. And like, it, like you take the problem saying, we're not playing word games. I know. Maybe you didn't kill her. Maybe you didn't kill her. But you know a lot more than you tell her. Do you know for a fact you did? No, I don't. Were you present that night? No, I wasn't. Do you know who was? I... Answer carefully. Answer honestly. The best of my knowledge is that Paige had it arranged. That she had contracted it to kill in some way. And who told you that? Pages, conversations after the fact on there, and what she had said about how convenient it was and everything else on there. Did she ever come out clean and tell me that she arranged to have Des killed? She was careful about that and didn't say that. She hinted to that she had her taken care of on there. Did she say how much money her contract was? I don't know if it was for that. She didn't say. I don't know her finances beyond what I've helped her and given her. I thought she had it arranged in some way. She talked about people owing her favors like that from before. She did tell me once on the, if I ever crossed her, that, you know. If you ever crossed her, what would happen? That she'd have me taken care of. So are you afraid to say anything that you're afraid you were going to be taken care of? She told me on the other if I ever, you know, crossed her or betrayed her on there, she'd have me taken care of. I took that to mean that she could have me killed. On this specific issue? No, not on this specific issue. Has Just Paige ever sh shared with you the specifics about what happened to Desiree? No.
Has, has anyone else ever talked to you about specifics about what happened in Israel? I don't know anyone that would know anything. I so no. So you're not necessarily protecting pain, you're trying to protect yourself and your family from harm. So you're not going to tell us anything the truth. You're that scared of her? Because you know you're. She's involved in one killing. Are you afraid of her? Am I that afraid of her? That's the question. Yes, I am afraid of her. I'm petrified on the... So is that why you're not telling us the truth? Is that what you're going to tell the judge? I've told you everything I know on there about this. You think that I know more? Yeah. I do. I mean, now you just, you came up with that last little tidbit, two hours and five minutes into it, that I'm afraid of her. Because she's threatened me. If I say anything, she's going to have me killed. That's powerful. And I would understand that. Do you know what she's led me to believe about what she can do or what she could do? I mean, she's talked about the motorcycle gangs and the people that are her favors. She's talked about uh, uh, Ivan Capitillo, her you know, son's father on there, what he was involved with. And how he had people taken care of on there. She's given me lots of reasons over the entire time I've known her to not try to cross her on there. That's the only reason why I never came forward before on anything on there, was I didn't want to die. I didn't want her to think that I'd given her up. Let me ask you this now that, now that that's out there, do you feel, is just yes or no, are you holding anything back now out of fear, for Paige, fear of Paige? Yes, probably, I don't know though. Okay, now let me, I, I think maybe some people communicate different ways, and you were telling me the way your mind works, you're, you're concerned that I ask you just the right question. But right now I'm worried about the big picture stuff, okay? The big picture stuff is, did you kill uh, Desiree? No, you say no. Did, do you know who did kill Desiree? I have a good idea that Paige had it done. Okay, were you present when she was killed? No. Were you involved in or aware of the planning of Desiree's death? Not beforehand, and no. Okay. I mean, after the fact, on there, I figured, I figured on there that she had done something. Has ever has Paige ever confessed to you that she killed Desiree or had her killed? She gave me the impression on there that she had it arranged. She didn't say, yes, I had her killed. She didn't say that she'd done that, but she gave me the impression when I asked about that after the fact with the guns and everything else, like I got it back, I'd asked her, did you do something with this? Did you, I mean, why did, why did you ask for my gun? Why did you do this on there? And she said what? She told me on not to ask anymore, just leave it alone. Don't ask any more questions about this. Asked what the hell was going on with that. She told me on there to stop asking questions and forget about it. Or you could be gone just as easily. So you're holding things back because you're totally afraid of it. This woman has given me every impression on it that she's had many people killed over the years. She said I had you killed months ago and since she gave you, you knew about the gun. You pressed her about it. I asked her about you it. Think, you think she's that stupid saying, hey, he's figured it out. Maybe I ought to take care of him too. I don't know. I don't know why she wanted to keep me around. Maybe for this exact scenario. Maybe for you guys coming down on her and figuring it out so that she could use me on there and get out of it. That's the only thing that makes any sense in my mind on there. It's that she wants me to be the scapegoat. Again, no, and then you won't say a word. I don't know who killed her. I don't. 
I believe Paige had it done. I don't know if she did it. I don't know if she had someone do it. I don't know. That's the impressions I got is that she had it arranged. So what else are you holding back? She made a comment about her body being dumped in Banks Lake. Some Russian guy from years ago on there that crossed some hooker that she knew. She told me that. She told me about, you know, killing people's families and things like that. That terrifies the fuck out of me. Why did she tell you all that? She told me that after all of this. That she's killed many people and that she's had people in the lake? She dumped some, she said it was the one that she was the most proud of on there, because it had something to do with some, she said something about Interpol on there, and it wasn't caught. This guy was dumped in Banks Lake, and I don't know if that's complete bullshit, or she's just puffing me full of smoke on there, blowing smoke in my ass, or get colon cancer on shit, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. I don't, honestly, I have no idea what to believe out of her, what's true and what's not, what's a game. Okay, so going back to the big picture, just globally, not getting, don't get hung up on did I tell them every minutia about every conversation I ever had with Paige, okay? Don't get hung up on that. Just thinking big picture, knowing that I'm worried about the global stuff, the big, big picture stuff. Is Marty involved? Did he know about this? Okay, do you feel like you've told me everything and you've told me the truth about everything you know? I feel I told you the truth as far as I know on there, yes. Okay. And do you believe that you would pass a polygraph at this time based on those big global, big picture questions? If you had to answer those yes or no, do you believe that you would pass a polygraph? I believe I would pass a polygraph. Okay. Is there anything else that you think I should know about? Anything, any big thing that's jumping out in your mind? Oh, I should have told him this. Keeping in mind that I don't need to know about every detail about every conversation you had. I think you're getting a little hung up. I am, because how, how can I not get hung up on you? Well, I'm sure you're, these, you're these, in a bad spot. And these details of my life, I mean, I'm sure I've probably lost my job and everything else. I mean, I've... I have no savings left, I have nothing else left on there. This is a threat to my actual life. Did, did you come into a big amount of money any time after uh, Desiree was killed? No. You never had like a big bump in your savings or anything? No, I've had a, I had a lot of savings, and like I said, I lived low with my dad. I saved up a lot of money, I plowed money to my 401k. I had $50,000 in my bank at one point on there. I'd drawn that down over the years. That's, I, that's gone now. After a, a wife and kids will do that, or a kid. Wife, wife and kid, kid uh, uh, paying off all her debts, everything else on there. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to initial this here and sign down here. This is a sworn statement. It says, I orally gave this statement to the officer and the officer recorded what I said. I gave the officer permission to record this statement. You're gonna, I'm going to ask you to initial there and then I'm going to ask you to sign where it says, I understand that this statement may be used in a court of law and may be used by a judge to determine the existence of probable cause or any charges that may be filed as a result of the described incident. This statement is truthful and accurate and I made it voluntarily, knowingly, and intelligently without any threats or promises of any kind. I certify or declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Washington that the foregoing is true and correct. Does that sound accurate? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you to initial right there and sign down there. Just put the date is uh, 11, 13, or 14. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my audio recorder right now. We're going to take a break, and the video recorder will still be running. Uh, you need anything to drink? Can you use the restroom? Restroom room, something to drink would be nice. Okay, we're going to get that taken care of. And then 
we're, we're going to take a break. Obviously, we have some things to discuss now because a lot of stuff has come out during our conversation. And, uh, and I'll get back with you and decide, tell you which direction we're going to go, what we decided. So I'm going to turn off my recorder now. The time is 11.50 hours, and I'm still with that kind of sand the hall. After police had laid out all the evidence in front of Marty, he claimed he was being set up by Page, but there was no proof to back up that statement. The police still had their suspicions about Scott and Page, but Marty was the only one convicted in this case. Marty entered an Alford plea, which meant he never confessed, but agreed that the evidence outweighed him. He was sentenced to 15 years for the slaying of Desiree Sunford.